what doesn't kill you gives you a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms and a really dark sense of humor. Hi, this is Coach MK, and this is The Morning Mantra. Hi, my name is MK Fleming. I'm a run coach based in Denver, Colorado, but this isn't a podcast about running exactly. Don't tell my clients, but we're never really talking about the running. When you know a craptastic event is coming, it helps to have a mantra to keep you centered and focused as you move through it. You don't have to be an athlete to be hashtag coached and loved by Coach MK. And if you are here, then you are hashtag winning at life. Today's mantra is, you did not fail. You did not fail. Sometimes I'll hear my daughter use a rough, almost cruel tone when she's correcting her younger siblings. I take her aside in those moments and remind her that only mommy gets to use the mommy tone, only mommy gets to use the mommy voice, and that I don't like using the mommy voice. But every time I do, part of me dies inside because I know where she learned that voice. It's the hardest part about being a parent, seeing my flaws replicated in her perfect little body. So I can only imagine the pain of the mom as you reached out in the past three weeks, asking for mantras. There are more of you than you think. I hesitate to say a number, but it's large. All of the children of these mamas are in varying stages of recovery from eating disorders. Some will start college in the fall. And not all, but some of these mamas have realized that they themselves have disordered eating habits or unhealthy relationships with food. And were unaware of this until they sought treatment with their child. That sound you hear, it's the sound of my heart breaking, breaking for all of you. That hard left I referenced in my previous mantra is in honor of these women who may not realize that they are the product of diet culture. That sounds (laughs) crazy. I mean, diet culture, diet culture, what is that? It's the diet our mothers were always on eating off a smaller plate because it would look fuller, the salad having to come before the pizza, the candy hidden in the cabinet behind the cleaning supplies, the new diet that was always coming, the promise that a better life, a better version of yourself was just 10 little pounds away, and then you could buy that dress, and then you could buy the shoes, and then... You would be worth it, so do it for that future you, because you right now, mm. Diet culture was a distraction. Beauty was a currency. Our mothers and their mothers could trade in a time when many states legally considered their wives' property, when domestic abuse was considered a private matter, no matter how violent, when women had to be not just smarter, but better, and flawless, and pretty, and... Thin went with pretty by definition. The stakes were high because their agency was low. Before we examine our mothers, we have to give them some grace. Diet culture was their coping mechanism as well as a survival skill. It gave them illusion of control. For context, my mother graduated college in 1971 and started teaching. That year, she could be fired for getting pregnant. That law wouldn't be passed till 1978. She could not apply for a credit card or co-sign on the mortgage to her home. That law would pass in 1974. She couldn't run the Boston Marathon. She couldn't run most marathons. And she couldn't say no if her husband wanted sex. Marital rape wasn't a crime until 1993. Ten years after that, the nanny we brought with us on our vacation was born. She doesn't know a world without affirmative action working in her favor, but acknowledges her privilege in being a white-passing Latina. HRH, the baby violet, will never experience the world before me, too. Things change rapidly within generations, and a lifetime of conditioning doesn't fall away overnight. Body positivity is not a substitute for true recovery. 
you've never lived in a world where a woman could truly and openly be okay with her body, much less be openly obsessed with improving it. That had to hide. That had to happen at home. We never talk about the diet. Now our mothers did the best they could. Raised in a time when their fears and complaints were routinely dismissed. Beauty was the source of power. It was currency. And beautiful was thin. It may have been more loving to tell their daughters that weight doesn't matter. But it wouldn't have necessarily been better parenting. It wouldn't have been true. It would not have been better preparation for the world outside the home. Now listen up because this is important. Our mothers can't help the mess they were born into. They're a product of it. And so are you. Therapy is the slow, painful picking away at the scars on your soul, examining the reactions and emotions you have in any given situation. Most of the things, most of the things we examine in therapy are the things we can't talk about elsewhere, notably the very real issues we face and the very real forces working against us and the very real pressures we face. It's easier to dismiss those things. It's easier to tell your daughter she's got nothing to worry about and why all this pressure that would have led to this eating disorder. Like, that isn't real. She made that up, right? Right? It's also easier to demonize the woman who taught me to vomit when I was 13 than to look at the culture that produced a kind, loving woman who truly thought she was doing a chubby kid a favor. Don't worry. In all the ways I would abuse my body later, bulimia wasn't on the list. I actually named myself vomit again. It's triggering to remember a moment. It's triggering to remember that conversation, and I prefer not to go there. So I tell you that to tell you this. It's easier to demonize a person than a culture because culture is big. It's easier to demonize our mothers who pass on their disordered eating habits to our children. How dare they? Than to look at ourselves and see our own reflection in our child's sickness. It hurts Way more than when I hear my beautiful daughter snarl, RJ! The work you are doing right now is the hardest work you'll ever do. And I really hope it leads to forgiveness and peace. You are not bad parents. You are not failures. That you are even considering your possible complicity in your child's condition is proof that you are going to be part of their solution. In all likelihood, you are not the demon in the story your child will tell her therapist. But you're a footnote. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I loved my mother more than anything, and my mother worried that I wasn't smart enough to offset the paltry amount of beauty currency I was born with. I was Would I ever be smart enough to operate in a world that would see me as ugly? Because only the smartest of the smart, there's only one RBG of her generation, what are the odds that I would be the chosen one of my generation, my that fully protected by what my brain could bring to the table? It could happen, but it was rare. I don't talk about my mother except to examine her influence on me, and in doing so, we cannot ignore the influence of diet culture, the weight of her actual weight. I love my mother. Fuck the world that attached her value to her waistline and fuck the diet culture that told her she was 10 pounds away from anything. She was perfect. She still is. I have no doubt your child talks about you the same way I talk about my mother. Even if your kid sees your influence in her sickness, your kid probably doesn't blame you. And that means you shouldn't either. If you stuck with this mantra this far, I promise therapy won't make you sound like a card-carrying feminist. You'll just sound like one. Because you see, these forces, once you've seen them, you cannot unsee them. And that is a good thing because that is how you recover seeing these forces. That is how you change your response because you can recognize them. Recognition leads to recovery, and if you can recognize these things in yourself, then hell yes, there's nothing but hope for you, nothing but hope for your kid. So, the mantra. In those moments when you see yourself reflected in your child, I want you to hear my voice in the back of your head saying, you did not fail. And you didn't. The world failed you. And the work you are doing right now 
to recognize the unhealthy patterns that you've been stewing in your entire life, that's how you're going to break them. My next mantra will be the mantra y'all originally requested to manage your fear as your child prepares to leave home in a few weeks. I'm pulling out the big guns for that one. Stay tuned. If you suspect that you or someone you love may have even disordered eating habits, call the National Eating Disorder Association at 1-800-931-2237. Again, that's 1-800-931-2237. Link in the show notes. You are coached, you are loved, and you are winning at life. And you are definitely winning at life if you subscribe to my Nuzzle Nut newsletter, follow me on Facebook, or follow me on Instagram. Feel free to do all three. The listeners who wrote in and inspired today's mantra all have daughters. But diet culture impacts men as well. If you are managing the impact of diet culture on your male teenage athlete son, read anything by Mario Fraioli. Link in the show notes. If you're curious about the impact of diet culture on the homosexual male community, follow Sam Dylan Finch on Twitter. Finally, if you want to learn more about diet culture on your male overachiever, future business leader, or quote-unquote metrosexual son, check any of the blowback against Twitter founder Jack Dorsey. Again, links to all of this will be in the show notes. Don't forget, if you need a mantra, you can always ask for one at info at coachedinlove.com. Again, that's email info, I-N-F-O, at coachedinlove.com.